Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the all new 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse Premium. This model is finished off in an all new color called Blue Ember Metallic. It actually changes color in the sunlight, which is really neat to see. And the MSRP for this top trim level Mustang starts right around $73,000. So let's start off with what this is powered by. Underneath the hood is the Gen 4 naturally aspirated 5 liter Coyote V8. This model is paired to the optional 10 speed automatic transmission and this pumps out 500 horsepower, 418 pound feet of torque. That power is sent to the rear wheels, propelling this almost 4,000 pound muscle car from 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. It has a top speed of 165 miles an hour. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, let's start up on the hood where this does have a functional heat extraction vent finished off in gloss black. And then there's a lot of matte black and gray accents for all this vinyl with Mustang Dark Horse on both sides. Now, it doesn't have a large bulge in the hood like some previous Mustang models do, but I think it gives it a great look nonetheless. And as you can tell with the proximity key, the DRLs will light up. We have that triple beam design for the LED headlights, as well as the sequential turn signals. And then there's some more gray accents surrounding the lower section of the grill. Middle of it is finished off in gloss black. And there are a lot of inlets to provide a lot of cooling to this engine. This model also has adaptive cruise. So there's a sensor down below, as well as the camera at the top of the windshield there. And then a very large front splitter to uh, add to that aggressive look. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 19 inch wheels. It also has color matching Brembo brakes. They're finished off in that same blue ember. This has six pistons up front, four pistons in the rear, and we have a very aggressive tire setup for this particular model. Now, the Dark Horse logo is also behind that tire. We have some brush gray for the mirrors. You will not see a single Ford badge on the exterior. For this Dark Horse, it is simply just that Dark Horse logo. This also has some side skirts to match nicely with up front. Really nice line in that rear fender as well. And then in back, this has a very large trunk mounted spoiler with the two-tone design. And even with its height, you can still see through from the driver's seat. So it doesn't really hinder any of your visibility. Gives it a cool look too. And as you can tell with the 3D dimension for these taillights, they are coming to life with that proximity key. There's a backup camera, all the parking sensors. This particular model also has the active quad tip dual exhaust with remote rev. So let's fire it up. And it does need a second to go through its startup. And once it starts to calm down, you can go unlock lock and do that one more time. And it sounds very good. Cool party trick to have for this. You just simply hold on that to unlock it and then you can use the button on the key fob or up underneath to open up the trunk. Now the back seats in this do not fold down, but you still have a decent amount of space. There's a little bit of space under the floor if you need to use it. So it's pretty practical for this style vehicle. You can definitely daily drive this and have plenty of space. Now, as we work our way to the interior, this model has the blue leather along with some suede above that. There's also black leather. There's the carbon fiber like trim accents surrounding the release handle, all the window adjustments, side mirror controls, and then a little bit of storage in the door. Mustang Dark Horse is also on the door sill. And take a look at these beautiful Recaro seats. They're leather and suede, finished off in blue. They are a manual adjusting. So we have recline, incline, we have the bar to slide it forwards and backwards, as well as your height adjustment. But with it in this position, we can slide it forwards to gain access to the rear. Now I sat in these in the full review and at five foot 10, not really where I wanna be, but if I had to be back there, I could ride around town if I needed a quick ride. You could also put car seats in the back or if you have young kids, still makes it practical if you want a sports car and you wanna bring them with you. Let's fire this back up where we have the solid steering wheel along with some more of the suede flat bottom design to it. On this left side, there's all the cruise control and adaptive cruise control settings. On the right side, there's volume along with Bluetooth. You have some steering wheel adjustments, tuning, and then a few more controls for the gauge cluster. Now, if we start on this left side here, 
you can go through the different modes that are available for this and you can actually set it up to where it will change the display when you go through the different modes. So that was normal. If we go into sport, it's cool that we have the graphic there, but you will see it change again. And then we can go into track mode where the entire tack is going to take up the upper section, which gives it a really cool vibe. And then you also have drag strip, there's slippery and custom. So just depending on how you're driving for the day, you can quickly have that set up. And then you can also go through some of your daily driving information right in the middle. So I can scroll through all of these vitals, just depending on what you'd like to see. And then of course we have the paddle shifters on the back side. Now there's all the headlight adjustments on the left side there. And then as we work our way back to the infotainment system, let's go home where you'll notice navigation along with weather and phone. There's also some settings that you can get into. So this is just a bunch of general info to scroll through. And this has the split screen to it. So you can pull up info on that right side as well. We can also go into features. My Mustang is how you can go through the cluster theme, which I just showed. However, there's also one more that I didn't show, and that is the Fox body. So the lighting on the back of it will appear green from that arrow, which is really neat to see. Everything else is what I already showed. And if we go back to track apps, you have your acceleration timer, brake performance, lap timer, even the drift brake. And then there's auxiliary gauges that you can monitor. You have a custom mode so you can set up profiles and then change the colors. If we go back to home, we have apps like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then in the entire lower section, you have your heated steering wheel, fan speed, temperature dials, even some research. Now there's two air vents in the middle, more of that carbon fiber like trim. This control down below gets you into my Mustang like I showed. There's traction control, hazards of favorites, even a defroster and then power and volume for the radio. Now there's also wireless charging along with some auxiliaries. And if we put this into reverse, get a massive backup camera. And then there's drive and the manual setting. So that allows you to use those paddle shifters. Here is the electronic e-brake. Pull it up to put the brake on, push it down to release it. There's two cup holders, then a little bit of storage with an auxiliary, plenty of space in the glove box. And then also dark horse is over on that passenger side. Up top, there's also a sunglass holder along with all the dome lights. And then a good bit of visibility. You have that window there to help look over that shoulder and then you can easily see around the pillar over the left. Switching over to the POV angle now, we're in sport mode second gear, here we go. And just a few twisties to throw into this video. But check out the full mountain video that we did with our reactions and how well this drives. But this is what it's like to be behind the wheel of the Mustang Dark Horse. And like I said earlier, it's such a fun sports car to drive. The paddles are actually very responsive, as you just saw in some of those twisties. Now, as you just saw, I had to downshift about four times to get down to a third or fourth gear. Now, with traffic in front of us, of course, that is going to be a factor in that. But it is a nice transmission to go with if you're not a three pedals type of person. So I do like that it is functional and easy to use. But aside from that, just daily driving this over the last few days has been a lot of fun. This particular model has gotten a lot of attention. I think it's because this exterior color, it really pops. It looks good from the outside. On the inside, there's some refinements as you can tell compared to the previous generation Mustang as far as the technology features and everything goes, but it's nice. This one is pretty much fully loaded with the upgraded Recaro seats, so we are missing the heated and ventilated seats. With that option, it does delete those. We have the suspension, the brakes, and then if we put it back into the normal drive setting, even in sport mode, it shifts very quick. And then if I slow down a little bit. So even in the normal setting, it will shift very nicely too. So it's a fun car to drive, something that you can rip on, something that you can daily drive. And as far as visibility goes, very easy to see. There's a pillar over that left side there, but you can see around it very easily. But that is going to wrap it up for the all new 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse Premium. 
If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And check out the uh, many other videos that we made with this dark horse. We even did a comparison with the Nismo that's currently following us at the moment. And you heard how quickly that downshifted as well. That's going to wrap it up. I will see you all in the next video.